Hey guys, um, I am not going to be in class today. I'm so sorry, I have a sick kid, so I gotta stay home with her. Um, but I, what I was planning on teaching you today was how to find primary sources online for your history fair research. Um, so I'm gonna go uh, through that anyway in this video, and then you'll be able to look back at it in the future, and hopefully um, it will help you find some things for your history fair project. So I'm gonna talk about four pathways today um, to get to uh, primary sources online in a kind of reliable fashion. The first site I'm gonna talk about is the Library of Congress. Then I'm gonna talk about a part of the National Archives online called Docs Teach. Um, I'm gonna show you where the Chicago Public Library has put together some sources for History Fair. And finally, I'm gonna show you how to look for a primary source collection that's related to your topic. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do <clears throat> is go to one of these websites. So if you go to Library of Congress in Google, then you're gonna find this website. It is loc.gov. It is run by the US government. Um, and up here, there's just, it's, uh, this website's kind of like the Chicago Public Library. It looks really pretty, but it's a little bit hard to navigate. The search is a helpful place to start. This is going to search everything, right? If you want, if you know you're looking for something more specific, you can go in here and say you want maps or newspapers or periodicals or a narrative or whatever. But let's say you want information about um, Al Capone uh, law enforcement um, tax evasion or something like that. So it's gonna take a moment, it's gonna search through everything. And then you're gonna get a bunch of um, sources. Uh, so you can tell from the date that's listed on here whether these are primary or secondary. Um, some of these uh, are pieces of legislation, that's kind of interesting. Um, some of them are things like political cartoons. If you go into any one of these, you can usually see um, sometimes not the whole thing, sometimes just the thumbnail, um, but it may be enough for you to see information that you could use in your project. Um, if you go back to your full search list, you can also see things that are available. Right now it's showing you only things that are available online. That's fine because you're not going to go to the Library of Congress anyway to, to find this stuff. Um, you can start by year, um, location. If you know that it's part of a, a a particular collection um, or it's from a particular place, you can search for it there. So there's a lot of ways that you can narrow down um, this list. Right now I have almost 4,000 results. That seems like a lot. Um, you can also always change your search terms um, and that will help you narrow down your topic as well. Okay, sorry, people were talking in the hall. I had to close my door. So that's one way of doing this. So your next um, uh, source that you're going to go to to find some of these primary sources is the National Archives. So same thing, I'm just gonna type in National Archives Docs Teach. Look, I looked for it before. Um, hit return. And I'm going to get to this website. This was designed primarily for teachers, but it's certainly something that students can use as well. This is, um, again, a government run site. This is from the National Archives, again, in Washington, DC. Um, and if you go here to exploring primary source documents, um, you get to search their archives. So let's say this time I wanna search for um, the space race and maybe uh, Sputnik. type in your search terms. And then again, it gives you um, some uh, some documents. So in this case, a couple of notes um, from NASA, it looks like uh, from uh, the National Defense and Education Act. Ooh, that's a really good one to use for this project. And then um, an image of Sputnik itself. Um, again, you would click on uh, the little thumbnail image to see the actual um, document. Um, this will actually give you, this is cool, this gives you a whole newsreel. Um, so this is something that uh, people would have seen in movie theaters, kind of like nightly news, right after this little Soviet missile was launched. I'm sorry, Soviet satellite. Um, and the other really cool thing about the Docs Teach page is if you go down to the bottom, it'll give you a citation, right? So just like um, some of our other sources, if you go to this online and copy it, you can just take that right to your annotated bibliography. Um, and, and then you don't have to retype anything on your own, which is really helpful. Um, uh, the other one I wanted to show you was uh, the resource list that's through the Chicago Public Library. Um, so we'll go to our favorite website, chipublib.org. Similar um, process for finding uh, JSTOR and EBSCO. Um, go to browse, go to online resources, 
And this link over here that says History Fair under the Four Teams section um, includes a couple things. So the Chicago Tribune Historical Archive, this is digital scans of um, a local newspaper that goes all the way back to 1849. Um, if you go down here, you see EBSCO and JSTOR. We love them. But there's also this section down at the bottom called Primary Sources. So um, you can kind of read the descriptions that are here on the page, um, but this again gives you access to some historical newspapers, um, the Chicago Defender, the Chicago Tribune. Um, and then this site, which is called the Digital Public Library of America, which if you're looking for images um, for of a particular thing, um, like I know somebody is researching Dorothea Lang, um, who was a photographer during the 1930s. Um, again, if you type in your search terms, you will find images related to this person. I will say on this particular website, they have um, a citation option available for you. And the little bit that I've seen um, makes me think that this is actually not reliable citations from this particular site. But the National Archives, um, and actually the Library of Congress has a citation option on their website as well. Those ones are good to use. So finally, the last thing I want to show you, if you go to some of these um, places and you just cannot find anything about your topic, you're completely at a loss, what you can also do is just do a Google search for a primary source collection related to your topic. So if I just search for primary sources related to, I'm trying to think of another topic, um, women's suffrage, USA. Um, if I go to a website like this, crusadeforthevote.org, from the National Women's History Museum, there are plenty of places out there and historians out there who have started to compile sets of primary sources, knowing that students, that educators, that people who are curious about our history want to go back and look at these original sources. Um, so you can see these primary source sets um, going all the way back to the early Republic, the early, um, the late 1700s, um, and you can kind of page through here. Um, again, going back to your Google search results, uh, this is the National Archives website again. This is the Library of Congress. Um, this is the Digital Public Library. Um, and here's a, a, a Gale is a publisher that has a lot of reference materials. And they've come up with a list of 11 primary source documents to mark um, the anniversary of the 1913 Women's March in Washington, DC. Um, so again, you can kind of go through here um, and see what these other editors have put together for you. This is a perfectly legitimate and appropriate use of um, research time. Um, and it can save you a lot of time if you're looking for primary sources. So don't be afraid when you're you're looking at your Google results to maybe kind of page a couple um, pretty deep in here. Um, again, uh, if it's a .edu, these are often from universities. So this is from Standish Library at Siena College. I don't even know where that is, but they have a whole online um, primary sources set again of places where um, students could go to do research on this particular topic. So that can help narrow the, the wide range of things you can find on the internet to something that's much more manageable and much more related to your topic. So again, just like all of these things, if you aren't finding a lot, you can kind of change your search ter terms. Um, like if I wasn't finding very much for suffrage, I might find type in women's rights or something like that. Um, or primary source collection for women's rights. And again, you'll see a lot of these same um, websites kind of pop up over and over again, and I get a couple new ones as well. So be creative about how you are searching for your topics. Um, use your good critical reading um, uh, eyes to see if these are appropriate resource collections and that will help you and then follow the link. So once you get into one of these, um, this itself, this website from the Newton Gresham Library is not a source in and of itself. You want to go to one of these other places. So if I went to um, African American Women Letters and Memoirs, um, which is from Duke University, URL not found, this also sometimes happens, but I'm going to persist and click on something else. So this is for the, Insti the Atria Institute for um, Gen Gender uh, Equality and Women's History, Library and Archive. So again, if I go in here and click around a little bit, I'm gonna find some sources here. This collection contains all these things. That's so great. Um, themes, collection, uh, and then just keep clicking through until you found, find something that you want. Articles. Remember that 90% of doing research is just reading. 
and probably another 5% is just clicking.